Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, now that I'm back from England and the Worley National uh, Model Railway Exhibition, uh, I wanted to give you guys uh, a little bit of feedback on that. So you'll be able to see footage that I shot um, of all of the displays being set up, as well as an overview shot of the area. Then we'll also go ahead and take another look around at some of the exhibition layouts that were set up and running for the show. And there are a lot of very, very nice layouts there. But the thing that I really want to say is a big thank you to all of the folks who came by and said hello to me at the show itself. Because to be honest with you, I was overwhelmed with the number of people that came by. I was kept pretty busy from the time that the doors first opened on Saturday morning until they closed on Sunday evening. So thank you again. Thanks for coming by and saying hello. Thanks for the great conversation. There were people taking pictures. There were people bringing up copies of my books to sign for them. And I enjoyed every bit of it. So thanks a lot for making it a great show for me in that respect. Now, what about my impressions of the show itself? Well, first of all, one thing that was obvious from just walking around, and you'll see that uh, with some of the footage here in a minute, are the number of uh, companies that are well known even here in the U.S. So, you know, there was Bachman, there was Woodland Scenics, and Bachman apparently is the importer distributor for Woodland Scenics products in the U.K. So they were everywhere in a lot of hobby shops, as well as on display there at the Bachman stand. Um, and again, I'll show you that in just a minute. There also was Pico. Now we know Pico in the U.S. for the track, but Pico also has a wide range of other model railway products. Uh, also present was Cato, or Cato, depending on your pronunciation, showing off some of their latest products, including uh, the new uh, Union Pacific Big Boy in Inscale that they'll be releasing soon. A couple of the other names that most Americans would be familiar with was Helgen. They had a display there, as well as Oxford Diecast. And Oxford Diecast is very popular in the UK, and uh, they produce both diecast cars and trucks and other vehicles, as well as their own line of railway models, locomotives, and also rolling stock. So they were there with their display, and you'll see that uh, in the footage as I do a walk by. And in addition to the dealers and manufacturers that are familiar to Americans, there were also just tons of other UK uh, manufacturers and dealers there. There was DCC Concepts, there was Dapple, as I said, Oxford Rails, Oxford Diecast was there, and Hornby was there with their new TT uh, gauge sets. So that was a new one at the show. And there were just tons of other dealers there selling uh, pre-owned and new uh, rolling stock and locomotives and kits and everything that you would expect to see at a U.S. model train show. So from that perspective, there wasn't a whole lot of difference between what you would see at a U.K. train show and a U.S. train show. Very, very similar. Now, people were asking me how it compared size-wise to U.S. train shows. There are a lot of train shows all over the U.S. throughout the year, and they vary greatly in size. So just to give you a pers perspective, Worley is their national model railway exhibition. So it's a national train show, and it's their biggest one in the circuit. Um, it was fairly large. However, the size wasn't as large as they'd expected because um, there was a train strike on Saturday of the show. And the exhibition hall is directly served by trains there, so they typically have a large crowd of people arriving by train. So because the train drivers or engineers were on strike that day, it heavily depressed the turnout. Prior to COVID in 2019, the show had hit an attendance of 18,000 over two days. This year, it came in at somewhere between 12 and a half and 13,000. So the train strike definitely had an, an impact on the show. Uh, in comparison, the train fest in Milwaukee can run up to say 20,000 over two days, and the big show in Amherst can go anywhere from 20 to 25,000. So that's the really big one uh, in the US. 
So in general, if it hadn't been for the uh, accents and the variety of accents in the room, um, it would be hard pressed, you'd be hard pressed to tell that you were not at a US model train show. It was that similar to what we see in the US. Now one thing I want to point out is that I'm going to be releasing this video on both of my channels on YouTube at the same time. And I'm going to do that because I'm sure that there are people who are not subscribed to both channels. And I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to see this. So be aware that you're not seeing double if you see it on both channels and are subscribed to both of them. Well, I guess that's enough introduction for you. Let's go ahead, go back to Worley, and we'll get a shot of the crowd rushing through the door, starting the show and getting things underway. So let's take a look at that. And here we are at the front entrance with all of the railway enthusiasts lined up, ready to break through the doors as soon as they open that line. We're going to wait here and get up crashing through here. And here they come. They just opened up the gates. I'm going to get out of the way before I end up being crushed by the crowd. Okay, I wanted to come back here uh, to the food terrace and give you an overhead perspective of the uh, size of the show here. So this is the Worley National Model Railways Exhibition. You can get a very good idea. There's just tons of uh, dealers here selling uh, various model railway products. We've got a number of displays of uh, railways, model railways on display operating. And then towards the front, a lot of manufacturer displays. We've got Pico, DCC Concepts. Uh, there's rails of Sheffield back there in the background. Hornby is back there, Gage Master, just everybody you can think of, Acura Scale, Cotto is here, and just a lot of different manufacturers have products here on display. And as usual, you just can't go anywhere without running into a subway. Okay, and here we have the DCC Concepts guys getting set up with this massive display that they have here. I think this is about 54 feet long, something like that. And they've got everything but the, but the shop here. It's amazing the amount of stuff they have. And we'll walk around. There's the Helgen set up. Now here's the Bachman stand. And you'll notice Woodland Scenics in amongst it. Now Bachman is the importer and distributor for Woodland Scenics in the UK, which is why you see them together. Railway Modeler has a big, big setup here. And of course, uh, no train show would be complete without various layouts. And there will be a number of layouts on display here at the show this weekend. Okay, down here is Oxford Rails and Oxford Diecast. So Oxford is well known in the US for their diecast uh, automobiles. So here's a good shot of their products. Massive number of models here from those. Now here's a shot of Alan Butler of Model U doing a scan of a customer. And uh, you can see that the uh, 3D model developing on the computer screens. There's one on the upper right and one on the upper left there uh, as he does those scans. So it's a laser scanning technique, I believe. He can then take this 3D model that is developed on the computer and print out a 3D model of the individual that he has scanned for use on your model railway. And uh, he does this, he has costumes there and a lot of other costumes available and can dress you up uh, in a number of different period outfits so you can look just like the rest of the uh, figures on your model railway. Okay, here we are with the Cato display. You can see their display layout on uh, operation here. And coming down, we've got some of their new products in their display case. You can see a lot of their very popular North American designs. But the big thing right here is the new N-Scale Union Pacific Big Boy announcement coming soon. So you can be waiting for that. Down here, you have more of their locomotives.
Okay, here's the uh, DCC Concepts modular layout that is set up to do shuttles back and forth here. And these automatically work with their ABC system, that's their asymmetric or automatic braking control, so that the locomotives actually pass each other and then go to locations where they'll come to a stop automatically and then wait. You can see this one locomotive is waiting now. And then it will go ahead and proceed onto the back track and wait for a command to go ahead and reverse and move in the other direction. So if you're looking for a way to automate a trolley layout or something of that nature, this is the system that you'd be looking for here. So it's their DCC concepts, ABC or automatic or asymmetric braking control system. You can see this one coming along and they're going to stop and wait, and the other one behind it will pass. And the turnout will automatically throw, and then the locomotive can then proceed on down. It's a brilliant operation. Works perfectly. Beautiful. Okay, so this is the DCC Concepts Western U.S. layout, and it uh, the uh, unit operates standalone without any operators being involved, and the locomotives use their ABC system and decoders, which detect the presence of the locomotive and give it a command to slow down and stop and then reverse whatever you need it to do. So you can set up a shuttle operation completely unattended as these locomotives are doing. So we have a Fairbanks Morse Walther's locomotive up at the top working its way around and it's going to come back down. And then we've got a small Bachman 44 tonner here midpoint and they'll pass somewhere in the middle. And uh, using the ABC system, they just shuttle all by themselves all day here. Now this is Mick Byron's uh, prize winning layout and it won the best modern image uh, layout uh, at Worley. Don't be confused by the yellow uh, liveries there. It's not a UP layout. This apparently is a UK railway test testing facility, and they use the, uh, the yellow livery or the yellow paint scheme on these. So it's an actual prototype that he's modeled. Now this was my favorite loco at the show. It is beautifully weathered, uh, absolutely gorgeous, and I love that throaty growl that you get from the locomotive. So let's just go ahead and listen to it as it comes in. Now on this next one, notice the very large turntable that is being used. So he can actually turn entire trains to go onto his layout. Now Bodman was a Great Western Railway line in Western England and it actually remains open and uh, in operation as a heritage railway there. So you can actually go and see the original railway. Now, 
on this particular layout, uh, you'll see that the modeler is using a uh, power cab throttle. And, uh, and power cabs are very, very popular in the UK, about as popular as they are here in the US. This is a 1925 error uh, station-based layout, beautifully done. And you'll see here we've got a Southern Railway tr passenger train uh, coming into the, uh, into the station area from the right. This wharf and lumber facility is another beautifully done layout. Note that uh, there's a train in the mid-ground hauling lumber uh, through the yard. So it's just beautifully done. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope I've uh, given you a good overview of what a train show is like in the UK from an American perspective. Uh, it was impressive. It was great to see it. Uh, it was interesting that there really aren't that many differences. And we really are just one people divided by a common language. And those accents brought that out quite a bit. But overall, we were able to talk and understand one another. And uh, English is English, no matter what the accent is. And model railroaders are model railroaders pretty much the same everywhere. And we're all looking for that next deal to come along and for the next great locomotive or piece of rolling stock that we can pick up at a very good price. So that's it for today. Um, I really had a great time over there at Worley. And once again, I want to thank all of you guys that stopped by and said hello during the two days of the train show. So that's it for today. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. And we'll see you here next time with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.